Hello and welcome to season three of Meet the Drapers, Brand Accelerator. Every week, three entrepreneurs pitch their startups to the Drapers and a VIP guest judge. Every episode, the judges declare a winner to move on to the semifinals. And the winner is... But here's the twist. You, the viewer, can invest in any and all of these startups. Like a company? Go to meetthedrapers.com and invest in their live crowdfunding campaign. And you can bring them back for the season finale. The crowd is voting in three of our finalists. This is your shot to invest like a venture capitalist. Now, let's make some money. Welcome to Meet the Drapers. We are in the semi-finals. The entrepreneurs here have made it through the first round, and they are ready for great things, and we're going to ask them tough, tough questions. But before we do, I want to introduce ourselves. I'm Tim Draper. I'm a venture capitalist with Draper Associates. This is my father, Bill Draper, a major pioneer in venture capital and now a philanthropic venture capitalist. And my sister, Polly Draper, is famous actor, director, producer, writer. And uh, we have two, <laughs> two, count them, two fantastic judges today. Kavita Gupta who is the uh, Stanford professor and spokesperson for the future of new cryptocurrencies and some amazing things. Uh, she has been on our show before and she did such an awesome job Thank that you. we have brought her back. Our other guest judge, <laughs> Paresh Galani, is a great uh, avid entrepreneur, has done some extraordinary things, an investor in Moon Express and, and Viome, uh, but he's also the topic of a major Bollywood film. And, uh, and it's called Sanju. And I just, I have a little Bollywood dance I like to do. <laughs> just one hand on your stomach, one over your head, right? And then, then it's this, and you go back this way. Yeah, yeah, you kind of rub your stomach as you go. You would, you would get a great roll. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, can you give us a little bit of your, your feeling on what's going to make it or break it for you with one of these entrepreneurs? Are we solving something which is not resolved? Are you truly, you know, providing a solution to a real problem? Or are we just actually having another business which is just like another one but slightly better? And how about you? What are you working on right now? We just launched a new regulated, first ever European regulated exchange uh, for uh, security tokens in Europe. Also, I'm investing a lot of an AI and blockchain again. One of my portfolio companies is about to go IPO, so a lot of work there. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Well, good. So the co companies we're seeing today are are pre-IPO. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what about you two? What, what kinds of things are you going to be looking for in these entrepreneurs to see which ones you really want to back? It's the next step that we're going to be talking to them. And so if there are just a few little questions that we had before, if they can answer those questions that we have, that will probably tell something to us. Already, I'm in love with them. The problem for me will be choosing, probably. Dad, what are you going to be looking for here? I'm going to try to judge which of them has the most energy, most likely to carry the ball all the way through, less concerned with where what they're trying to do, and more concerned with whether I think they can get there. But I love all the entrepreneurs and that we've seen, and, and they're the heroes. Okay, so let's bring on the first entrepreneur. Before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Evo is a wellness app that guides you to a healthier lifestyle based on your body's needs. And we collect your body data with urine tests. It is great to have you on, your, on the show. You so Thank much. you so much to come to meet the Drapers. Thank you so much. And we got accepted to semifinals. It was super exciting. Oh, oh. <laughs> it is Vivo! Congratulations! So for there, like who's looking for wellness products and trying to understand their bodies, if you want to replace your bad habits with good ones, you should definitely give a shot to Vivo. Let's meet with our first entrepreneur, uh, Mirai from Vivu. Uh, we were really impressed the first time around. Let's see what you can tell us this time. 
Two of our judges are not up to date on what you do. So if you could do that quickly, and then we'll fire in with some tough questions. Vivo is a wellness app that guides you to a healthier lifestyle based on your body's needs. And we collect your body data with a simple urine test stick. So you can actually pee on it, scan it with your mobile app, and in seconds you will be reaching your scores, such as your hydration, ketones, immunity, pH, and your personalized nutrition advice instantly. So, and by the way, it was very easy to do. I did it at lunch today, and it turns out I'm, I'm only moderately healthy. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty interesting. Anyway, maybe you can tell them how you're gonna make money doing this. Right now we are partnership marketing, which means big companies such as Bayer Pharma to small and boutique as gyms, wellness studios. We're selling our products for a wholesale products to them and they're providing our solution to their customers and employees. When the user likes our products so much, they come back to our website and buy more. So we create this chain of uh, sales, basically, uh, through B2B to B to C. Tell them specifically what it tests, like you told us. So we're testing uh, your hydration levels based on your specific gravity, uh, pH levels, uh, immunity based on your white blood cells in your urine, and ketones. So how accurate has been the results? So mm -hmm. if I do your test and if I go to the lab, mm -hmm. has people tested between these two? Has there been any delta difference on accuracy? Of course, that's how we validate ourselves. Uh, our test is pretty similar to hospital ones, and we have 90% similarities. Because we use machine learning, becoming better and better in time with more data. Have you run something before? Yes, uh, I run a, a mobile diagnostic company before for animal, animal testing on farms, for brucellosis and tuberculosis testing. We don't see in our everyday lives, but when you go to farms, even one microbe can spread so fast. And I also worked in home, uh, smart home technologies, a startup in Europe, uh, and we went to Series C with that startup. In reading your uh, package, it, it's not FDA approved and it says do not take this to a doctor for an evaluation or something. The packages don't have because we got it at like a month ago and the packages printed a few months ago. Uh, we registered to FDA as a class one device. Yeah. You do have FDA yes, approval? Reg now? Not approval, registered to FDA. Uh, now why? Why bother? Why uh, not make it just a beta <laughs> test for everybody? Funny what? story, we, we're producing them in-house in our production facility in Turkey and we're shipping them here. So FDA said, where is your shipment number and product number? We could go a long way without an FDA, yes, because it's a wellness product. But yeah. when you do inter international trading, you need to have your FD FDA registrations and everything. So are you planning to actually have a direct-to-consumer or actually going through you know, bulk to mm -hmm. you know, the companies as well? To grow, we have to be following B2B partners. Uh, Direct-to-consumer is so expensive, takes a long time to grow. We're doing both but focus is B2B. What is your traction so far? Um, we ship more than 20,000 strips to the United States. Mm -hmm. We have 600 subscribers, but in total our user is almost 10,000 users. So it says you have raised 600K, how mm -hmm. much do you want to raise? And what is that money gonna be used for? 600K, almost half of it we already use for manufacturing, that product development, and basically building our team and advice database. And we're looking for half a million dollar more to basically reach a good enough user base to go to Series A. How much is your uh, uh, technology patented? What's so, what's so special about it? I have it actually here. Like a unique strip, it's clean. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, is, that, is that a patent protected? It, yes, patent pat protected and utility patents. On and how often do you test yourself? Me? Oh my God. I test myself like every day. <laughs> but that's what I'm gonna do. She yeah. said she'd do yeah. that totally every day. Yeah. I, I, this is my passion, I love it. So this is your opportunity to pitch all those viewers out there and you tell them why they need to back you, why this is gonna be so great. Vivo is a wellness app that guides you to a healthier lifestyle based on your body's needs. And we're doing it with your pee. So come and support us. And if you're looking for a solution in your wellness journey, which is the missing link, that you don't have enough data or support, Vivo can be the app for you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so thank much you so for much. coming back on to Meet the Drapers. And congratulations uh, for making you. it this far. Drapers are so nice and they ask really good questions and we did our best. Tim said he tried a product which is so exciting and he really liked it and he already w was looking his advice and what he can do with the buffet downstairs. So maybe they like the product. 
Our next steps are we're going live on Republic. We're looking for people's support. We're calling them to come and join me with family. So, viewers out there, do we still like Vivu? Why don't we ask the judges? I think it's pretty unique, uh, given the if they're protected, patent protected, and if it has some protection to actually get out there. But uh, the test alone of, of this test is not going to be enough. I mean, this test combined with the other, for example, Viome or any other microbiome test, I think that's what that would add value to it. I think it's a great addition to what you would do in the future. But if they can deliver the results that quickly and portably, I think they have something. I think I found it very interesting as a wellness product for day-to-day -day use to quickly check after you go into a gym or like you said your energy level or like hydration. I want to see what additional tests do they add and I do believe that product like this has a big B2C market directly instead of going to B2B. There's a huge demand today directly on Amazons, Walmarts and Whole Foods of the world where you can just go pick a box of strep and you have it for a month to just make sure. It's got the most potential to be a really big company. I think she'll ga gather the re rest of the management team that she needs. And the product, I, uh, I don't know enough about it. I'd have, probably have to study that a little more. But I, it sounds like a great product. Yeah, I agree. I love it. Yeah, may, the results aren't as specific or they aren't as medical. All those things that she finds out that you could find out from this test are things that day to day would be a great thing to know, like you today going, hey, turns out my immune system's down, which is absolutely true because you have a cold. Yeah. I don't think it has to continue being produced in Turkey, though, because of the whole FDA friction which you talked about. I, I don't think you need the FDA to yeah. say, yeah, this is fine. It's just it, like I'm, I don't know, the P-test keeps telling me I need more ketones or whatever they are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'll just go get, I'll go get a few ketones and everything will be good. I think they're good. <laughs> okay, we got to move on to the next one. But before we do that, we Let's just check to see what's going on behind the scenes. Snowball is a wealth generation company that brings opportunity of smart portfolio investing to the masses. And so we let the masses invest in crypto like Warren Buffett wants them to invest in stocks. Snowball is the winner. We won alongside Half Books as well, so really, really excited to progress to the next round. We believe in this so much, and it's so rewarding when someone can see that value, but also get in touch with your vision as well. Uh, and we truly believe that the wave has not only come, but it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. Our mission is to democratize this information such that if you wish to play in this space, we wanna give you the opportunity to play to win. And so we would love to invite you to use Snowball. So again, we have parole from Snowball. You now have two new judges, so you have to kind of give them a little summary of the pitch so that they get, they get what you're doing. If the Snowball is gonna melt or freeze or fly. Snowball is a wealth generation company which gives the masses an opportunity to invest in this new asset class which is digital assets or cryptocurrency. Our vision is that assets will be digitized. Our mission is to democratize access to information and this information is in the form of a professionally curated portfolio. Some call us the Charles Schwab for crypto and today we have an iOS app which is available in 36 states in the United States. Our concerns with Snowball were that there are others out there. How are you better? Now, when it comes to cryptocurrencies, traditionally platforms like Coinbase will do the what's best for the company, but Snowball differentiates ourselves because our incentives are aligned with the users. Now, the net result of this, what we've seen with Betterment is Betterment has become the category leader for robo-advisors, and the reason why is because they're a fiduciary responsibility as a registered investment advisor. Today, there are no winners in this space. However, the fact that companies are coming to this space signals that the demand is real. You know, philanthropy is something that has been very near and dear to my heart and to serve underserved communities. And so, for example, I believe the statistic is 49 uh, to one men to women in blockchain. However, Snowball, 30% of the folks that work at Snowball are women. And in addition, we've partnered with women in blockchain 
helping us to make sure that we can stay true to our mission. Wait, 41 men to one woman in blockchain? That can't be 49 to one approximately. It was the last statistic that I saw. Unbelievable. Why? I wonder why that is. Most of the women in blockchain are actually not coming from US or Europe. They are coming from Israel and Middle East and a lot right? of developing countries. I'm sure. still a little confused in understanding is Snowball is for companies who are going to have crypto or banks who are going to have crypto or individual wealth management? Snowball is for both corporate and individuals. Now, we have seen that the highest folks that have come and started using Snowball follow the category of Henry. High earners, not rich yet. They typically are between 20 to 26. They work for tech companies. Um, however, we've also made partnerships with an iBank as well as IRAs, which about 61% of iBank's customers are asking for access to this asset class as well as this evolving asset class to come. Trading in crypto is you have to be very fast when the market moves up and down. I need to move fast and I need to sell it. If it's yeah. in a cold storage and I need multi-sec wallet and then you have another party in the middle, what is the time difference which is gonna take in all the process? Sure, if you are an active trader that wants to buy and sell with the market movements, you are not the right customer for Snowball. Our goal is to change human consciousness from trying to become an overnight millionaire to invest for the long term in an index. Warren Buffett made a million dollar bet that the S&P 500 would outperform a portfolio of hedge funds and it did over time. And so our goal is to let people invest for the long term. Now I'd like you to finish by looking at the camera and telling these viewers why the crowdfund should go to you and uh, where you're going to invest the money once they've invested in you. So why should you invest in Snowball and why should you invest now? Well, one, Snowball is by the people and for the people. Our success is married to your success. As legally fiduciary responsibility, we will do the best to recommend what we think is most profitable for you. In addition, we are the first and only company to be able to recommend a portfolio with various different risk appetite, as well as have proprietary portfolios that give you access to generate wealth, whether the market is up or whether the market is down. So the time is now and we're here to serve you. Thanks. Terrific. Well, thanks once again for coming back to meet the Drapers. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, the pitch went well. You're on the spotlight and you're with world-class investors who are changing the industry and the game. And so you want to say as much as possible, however you want to say enough for people to digest it. I would say why Snowball and why now? Snowball is a fiduciary and has a legal responsibility to do what's best for the customer. We only win when you win. So the time is now because success comes in waves. We give you opportunity to invest. So the crypto market is volatile, but your portfolio doesn't have to be. Invest today. So what did you all think of Snowball this time? I'm going to go to Kavita, who knows an awful lot about crypto. What do you think of Snowball? Very impressed with the type of investors they have. Uh, my biggest problem so far is it's not a unique service. A lot of people are doing it. Secondly, the background of the founders are not really from wealth management. Uh, so I don't find a reason for me to trust this versus a platform like Anchorage or something else. So Anchorage is just doing custody for yes. you. These guys are helping you manage your crypto. Yes, yeah. but whom am I giving my custody? Why do you think it is that women are 149th <laughs> as likely to own Bitcoin? I think the women in this generation, when they start making money, they are actually figuring out that they can actually invest in real estate and gold, forget about something riskier. <laughs> well, there aren't that many women entrepreneurs, and there are probably more men who are gamblers. I mean, I don't know. You go to Las Vegas, you see that yeah. old lady. <laughs> old lady, old lady with the yeah. slot. Mm. <laughs> I like the the idea of the platform. Do I like this particular, what is so unique about this particular platform? And I didn't hear anything like, oh, we have this is amazing plan to just go and capture the market mm -hmm. because this is how we're backed up by the large mm -hmm. amount or we have some experts to go. 
So an execution is extremely important. If I have to choose between them and let's say Bank of America, I would go with Bank of America. Just because they would have a balance sheet in case they lose my money, I think something will come back. I'm just the opposite because <laughs> the, the banks are getting hacked like crazy uh, and, and we look at crypto and we say, this is safe. I don't know that much about crypto, but I feel that it's something I would invest in uh, a small amount of money just to learn more. I, I think it would be good as a specialty. I wouldn't want to put very much money in them. So do you own Bitcoin? I do not. Oh, okay. I don't know. Uh, you may. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <Are> you <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Okay, well, let's move on to our next contestant. Before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Hasbrook is an interactive storytelling platform where the reader is allowed to make decisions and change the ending and path and course of the story. So as an example, our Cinderella story has, of course, its original ending, but it also has 10 other different endings. So she can decide to become a vet, travel around the world, or even become or start a business. Snowball is the winner, but that path books should move on to. We're very happy we're in the semifinals. I have no words. <laughs> When they said the first startup, I kind of was like, oh, okay, it's fine. But then they said our name and I got so excited and I got so happy. We, we need to show the potential of the platform. We need to show how, how to reach millions, how we will make uh, millions users to, to love reading. They mentioned how it was it's, it's going to be easy like, for Amazon to use this idea and make it into an, a new app for them. So we want to address that. I mean, if we get the, with the users, the, a big number of users, that's not gonna be possible. Uh, they love our project and I hope that they will support us in, in the, uh, and go to the finals. So let's hear from our next semi-finalist, Pathbooks. Okay, so we've got two judges who haven't heard your pitch. If you can do that kind of quickly. My name is Jorge Caballero, I'm a writer uh, and programmer and I am the founder of Pathbooks. Hi, my name is Cassandra Rodriguez and I'm the youngest writer at Pathbooks. So I have a question for you guys. Why do kids don't like to read? It's not because they don't have access to books, but it's really because they think that traditional reading is boring. But in Pathbooks, you are really part of the story. You have the power to change what's going to happen at the end. We are trying to empower boys and girls to realize the importance of decision-making in real life. We have received thousands of positive comments saying like, oh, I didn't like to read, but with Pathbooks, it's amazing. Um, we have received 45% of more engagement in the reading, and we have an average of 2.4 rereads for each of our books. With Pathbooks, we're going to make kids and teens love reading again. For example, Treasure Island, or Jane Eyre, Beowulf, or Shakespeare. Could you take those books and start and writing start different writing endings, different to endings them. in the style of those people? I, I'm a huge fan of Jules Verne. My favorite, favorite book is uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I read uh, an adaptation of that book where you can interact with Captain Nemo. And believe me, it's, it's, it's amazing. And you have the original ending, and you, you tell the, the reader, oh, this is the original ending. But uh, if you want to choose another path, this is the other options. See what happened with the story. But do and you so have to write all those three endings? The writer, and under? The writer do the, all the endings. All, all the structure is... The, the writer, scene. whoever the writer is. So do you work with original writers for the alternative ending? Or it's your writers? We have writers from many countries, and we also invite uh, 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 other writers for create content for pad books. How are you uh, attracting the writers to write for you? It's mostly on social media, but we also have, we do like writing contests so they can come to us, and then if they win, we publish their book in pad books. Because that's the main thing, if you have the good writings, and that's when the readers come in, if, if users don't come on board, because it's like Netflix, they're creating enough content for you know, you know, users to come on board. So do you have a critical mass of writers to actually continue writing different things and stuff? We uh, talk with, with uh, professional writers to read the stories and filter the stories. Right. And you just publish the best stories. So the publishing contracts does not allow a writer to have anything to do with their content, which could be deemed as original content and extension of their material to be placed anywhere. So that could be one of a very big problem yeah. for big writers. Not yet, but if we talk with a publishing company, for example, Penguin Random House, and they want to make business, a new business with the same content, the writer can create another ending or interactive version of that book. But do you it's need possible. the writer to do that? Can't you take, like, let's say, a Dan Brown book 
and then have your own writers or your systems to have but a different wouldn't the writer image. have to give permission but, to yeah, do I, yeah I, I but would. for example with, with brands we have, we have paddle for some brands mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they want to uh, write or create the endings and sometimes they, they told us oh you create the endings it's depend of the company depend of the publishing company depend of the writer how much attraction have you seen from different age groups it is mainly right now with kids because that's our target right now because that's where we're lacking that. We're lacking the reading on kids. So we're seeing 45% more engagement in, in comparison to a, to a regular book. But we also have stories for young adults and adults too. What's the number of kids that you've worked with to get those numbers? Uh, right now, uh, our uh, 11,000 users account Are they all patent. paying the $5 yeah. a month? No, uh, uh, paying customers right now are uh, uh, 550. That's Where are you getting most of your paid customers? From Mexico or some other countries? Uh, Mexico is one of the uh, top uh, countries, uh, Latin America and also, also United States. Uh, right now, uh, the stories are in Spanish and English. What are each of your roles in the business? Okay, he's the CEO and I'm the... Um, director of innovation so during the summer because I have school I help him do the videos the marketing the social media with my friends promoting yeah uh, we have a thing we're, we're five so team. you have all those viewers out there that could jump into your crowd fund and invest in your business tell them why they should invest in your business and what you're gonna do with the money so Pathbooks is the future it's the future for all these generations we're taking reading to the next level the money we're gonna get is to help us grow. We want to expand all the way so we can reach many users, many kids, many adults, and empower decision making. Well, thank you so much for coming back on Meet the Drapers. Thank you so it's much. Great fun having you. It's tough, more questions, more deeply, but it's, it's, it's exciting and we're very happy. They like the idea, they like the project. I'm so excited and now I'm relieved. <laughs> <laughs> For me, living the experience and being in school and actually seeing the process of how kids don't like to read, it hurts me so bad that they actually think it's really boring, right? But they actually haven't given a chance to actually read and pay attention and live the story. So what we're doing in Pathbooks is really engaging the reader and you can be part of the story. So what do we think of Pathbooks? Kavita, what do you think? I think the concept is very exciting. I would love to go and create different endings to the books, which has made me cry a lot. Make be you happy. cry more no. or make you happy? I want happy endings. <laughs> Typical Bollywood happy endings. <laughs> I don't get the model. For me, every kid and every adult should read how the writer warned them to get that perspective. And after that, if they play as an interactive material, like what else could have happened, that's exciting for me. But if you don't know the original story and you are just playing with the content and you never get to read, then I'm not sure. Dad, what do you think? I don't quite understand how they contact the authors to rewrite their endings. I assume that it's just new authors and they look at this as a new art form. They may make it a promotional tool though, like in the future for an author, if you are releasing a book, then release like a audio version or like a video version. Yeah, but I've written the book. <laughs> Phew, it's done and I don't want to redo it. Well, yours is non-fiction. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much gonna have the same ending everywhere. You mean mine? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I think I like the idea of having it, you know, interactive because the kids are very natural at it. They're really good at it. I really wonder if they can actually do this utility patent to say this is the way to learning. If they can file that, I don't know if they can or not. But if they can, <coughs> then then they will have a head when when the, the Disney's of the world will learn that this is a way to you know teach. They can just they're a big elephant. Now they just come and take is out so, so I like the idea of it growing it it's gonna be very difficult for them too well I love her just adore that little girl the branching endings has been very big in Netflix series and I think it's definitely the new road to take to your point it hurts my heart to think that as as a writer as well as just a reader Somebody they would deconstruct <laughs> a strong emotional path i took to come to a certain ending that's why i only saw this as working for children's books time for our next contestant before we see them i'd like to show you what's going on behind the scenes 
Uh, Zephyr designs and manufactures high-density lie-flat seating for any type of transport. We're solving the problem of improving transportation for 80% of all global travelers. It is Zephyr. Congratulations. Yay. Well, I've advanced. I'm still kind of in shock about it, but I think the value proposition resonated. Also, I had a physical mock-up, which I was very passionate about. Ultimately, it was, a, it was a concept that can really benefit everyone, or at least someone people can relate to it. I have to refine my business plan and some of the metrics around financials, but it's an ongoing process. So I actually want the Republic campaign to be about anyone who doesn't like the current state of commercial air travel and to contribute something that represents their frustration with anti-innovation. People are looking for a product, for a better experience, and hopefully the airlines will agree and we can all do this together. So our final semi-finalists, Zephyr Aerospace, uh, go ahead and give a quick rundown of what you've got, and then we'll all be asking as much as we can to get okay. a good understanding of your business. Um, so Zephyr Aerospace produces high-density, lie-flat seating in any transportation medium. It includes buses, trains, and commercial aviation. We also have the option to sleep, so it's a real estate play. In airport lounges, in places where people would be in transit while they're traveling, they can access sleep at an affordable price point. This is a specimen that we've designed and built for 777 and Airbus 350 aircraft. So this seat here would replace a premium economy class seat. So we take the feature that travelers really care about, which is the ability to sleep, and we make it more accessible and more affordable. For the airlines, we configure this exact seat in the same real estate where the current seats are now. So there's no loss in seating density. So, yeah, so this is a bunk levels, bed right? of seats, and there are, there are steps up. So what it would look like visually on the air, this is a fuselage. For me, it's an I travel extensively, and, I, and every time I got the flight, even locally from here to Chicago to New York, it's always been, is this the best we can do in seats configuration, right? right? In the time of emergency, would FAA would even allow the stacked? So to answer that, we have met with three FAA committees already. Um, there's precedent for bunk bed configurations on board the aircraft now, mm -hmm. where the crew actually sleep. Most people don't know this, but they sleep sure. above the overhead bin space, yeah. and they have bunk beds there. Mm -hmm. uh, so the only thing that we're certifying that's different is the takeoff taxi and landing position in the same bunk bed environment, if that makes sense. Yeah. The real IP here is kind of that we've configured a way to have a bed extension attached to a unit where you'd be seated in an upright position anyways. So there is precedent to answer that question. The airlines are very receptive to it. I've met with seven airlines already. Uh, we're in current engineering studies and feasibility studies with four of them. It looks a little narrow compared to what I am used to. It, You've it, been it, flying first class. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to make this a product that appeals to a price elastic customer. That's the difference. This is an economy class product, not a premium class right. product. And if it's too good, then there's going to be a risk of cannibalizing existing yeah. price inelastic customers who are going to downgrade. That's what this is. It's basically paying to sleep. The real estate, as you are explaining, the changes are not in hand of the airline. It's basically people who make the aircrafts. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if they are ready to say that the density, like the weight, aerospace, like air pressure and everything is going to stay with the seat, basically defines what bedside seats you are getting. Correct. So how are you handling that? Well, we're approaching this more of trying to find precedent that already exists and just slightly modifying it. So we need to start this from scratch, so it's not entirely blue ocean. We're just saying, let's take a business class seat, build out a composite so it's lighter weight, and make it more compatible in an economy class real estate. It's all a real estate question, okay? It is a regulatory issue, and we are, we are working through that. We have some of the best in the industry who are, who are supporting the project, who are helping us, so. Let's say it's just ideal. The seat manufacturers that sell to the airlines are going to do it, and what Royalty protection do you have? So we've received a design patent. Surprisingly though, there's not a lot of people who've tried to put a bunk bed on a plane. I know it sounds weird. I spent half my time trying to tell airlines that passengers want this. It's a very easy customer win for you. A lot of them make so much money selling business class seats that cost $100,000. They're not focused on bunk beds. And when they are, by that point, because it's a whole domino effect in the industry, once the first airline has it, they're all gonna want it. So Jeffrey, can I get you to look at your viewers right over here and say, why should they be investing in Zephyr? You know, what you're gonna do with the money and how great is this business gonna be? Anyone who's ever flown economy class knows it's a miserable experience and the airlines by design want it to continue to deteriorate. 
Help me help you tell the airlines that a better case can, be, can exist and that if a better seat was available and a willingness to pay match the price, you could upgrade your, your price of travel. Um, and I think it's most important for everyone that this seat represents a more valuable version of a business class product because you can sleep. Well, thank you for coming to meet the Thanks Drapers. Thanks very much. Terrific. Appreciate it. It was amazing. Fresh blood, there was some fresh input about the product they hadn't seen before. Great questions around consumer usability, certification, all very good topics to address. I think the product speaks for itself. It's a hardware concept, so once you see it visibly, you kind of understand what it, what it is and what it can offer. Consumers resonate because everyone can relate to how miserable air travels become. The airlines, by design, do not want to offer an enhanced product because they feel that economy customers have exactly what they need. But a lot of them are willing to pay more, and they'll consider a bet on their next flight. So it's really important for me that the airlines see that demand. So, what did you all think of Zephyr? I, for one, would like to be a customer. I agree, <laughs> this, uh, this would be a very comfortable way. I thought the uh, entrepreneur was good. I thought the design was unusual and, and very good. The difficulty is you have to sell to the seat manufacturers and they get the idea and pretty soon they own it and they've done it without paying you a penny. So that is, I think, his biggest problem. Uh, I loved it. I liked it initially, I said, anything disruptive thinking, are you really solving the real issue? Are you really solving the real problem? And I think they are. Seating has never been disrupted you know, for a very long time. Uh, regulatory is going to be a little bit of a tough task, but if they can pass through and convince them that it's as safe as would be otherwise, I think they got something. I've slept on it. I mean, I didn't sleep on it, but I, climbed, I climbed into it and wanted to sleep on it, and I thought it was just super comfortable. I, I was concerned about the regulatory aspects, too, because of how many old people and handicapped people exactly. are never, ever going to buy those seats, and so you're going to, you know, you're going to say, oh, sorry, we have to save those for the handicapped people or for the old people, and that deep down the airlines don't want the economy chairs to be all that great because they, they want people to spend the extra money for first class. And, and if you can find a way to sleep, you will go economy instead of first class or business class. I feel like they should get the same lawyer who defended the cup holder. <laughs> because as you know, this, somebody invented a really simple cup holder and all the other automotive mm. companies had to kind of do these kludgy cup holders but the very simple one was was uh, had a real protection yeah. so I think they need real protection but the, the other thing I think that he's missing is you've got a customer sitting in your chair for 10 hours so do something with them sell them something else do something where you you can keep adding more and more services and maybe some of those will be so defendable that the airlines can't do without you. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where it goes. So with that, now we've got to choose who goes to the finals. Uh -huh. We've just seen Zephyr Aerospace and that's the, the new kind of airplane seat that's a double decker and it's very comfortable. Vivu, which was the pee test that you take into the bathroom and it determines how well you are and, and what you should be eating. Pathbooks, which is the uh, young girl who's figured out that we want multiple endings to our stories. And Snowball, which was the entrepreneur who wanted to make sure that we, we would have a balanced portfolio of crypto. Uh, so with that, Kavita, who's your choice and why? My first choice is Vivu, uh, because I think this is a product I can start using like in half an hour. And uh, I, I'm very, very curious to see my stats and use it as a wellness product. And I also see the market is really huge for them. If they figure out their market idea, they could be really big. My second is Zephyr, the aerospace company. Again, they, the barrier to entry is huge, but the product makes a lot of sense and there's a huge demand for it. Dad, who's, who are your choices? Vivu, uh, to me, is my favorite. Uh, I think they've got uh, a good product. It's huge market, half the humanity. I, I thought the uh, management was good. I really, 
the, the pricing seemed okay, and they've gotten patents on it. And so I, Vivu, way above the others. Uh, Zephyr, probably second choice, but uh, because uh, it is well thought through, and um, I like the entrepreneur the m m perhaps m more than any of them. Ditto with them. D Vivu, way, way, way on the top. And Zephyr next, because I just love the fact that he designed something that's so unique that I had never thought of except in my contorted dreams on airplanes. Uh, the Vivo is, you know, number one, definitely. There's a, the product ready, they, they have a clear market, they know exactly where they're going. You know, the only thing I think they're going to raise money and they're going to be quickly exited because there's going to be acquisition on, on this one. Vivo is for sure uh, my first choice and Zephyr, they, they solving something. Both the companies, in my always believe, are they solving a real, you know, real life issues? Are they really addressing the market? And I think these both are. We should all be partners in the same firm. The decisions would be so easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the crystal ball hasn't spoken yet. Ah. So what you have all done is feed into the crystal ball and I am just a medium. So, okay, now we've got, uh, ooh. I'm feeling a very strong vibe. Uh, it came from all sides. <laughs> Is it Pathbook? Is it Zephyr? Is it... Vivu? Boom! It's Vivu. Vivu will be going on to the finals. We're looking forward to seeing him there. Very exciting. What a great day. Thank you so much for being such Pleasure. great so guests, much. judges. So we'll see you next week on Meet, Meet the, the Drapers! Drapers!